Halloween. What? And we're done. Hey fellow fiction fanatics, I'm Chase. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my monthly wrap up for October. In October I was able to read five-ish books. I say that because the first couple books I'm going to talk about are actually books 9 through 25 of The Magic Tree House by Mary Pope Osborne. So Jack and Annie go on some more adventures and learn new things as master librarians. I was surprised how entertaining and enjoyable these books still were and in one of the books I was so excited because Jack and Annie learned a little bit about sign language. Obviously these books are geared for young readers and they're very structured so you know exactly what's going to happen but that being said it's perfect for the audience that it's intended and I really did enjoy my reread of these books. So for these reasons I gave these books 5 stars. And these books are helping me complete my Throwback Thursday challenge, which is where I read a book from my childhood. So I'm trying to get through as many of the Magic Treehouse books as I can. The second book I read was Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks. So in this book we featured Josiah and Deja. They are seniors and tonight is their last night to work the famous pumpkin patch. But they are on a mission. But this mission will have them traverse all over the patch and enjoying the sights and snacks along the way. This is a crazy fun fall read that I absolutely adore. I love to pick it up every year. It's just the perfect way to jump into fall. I love every minute of this book and I highly, highly recommend you pick this up, especially during this time of year. So as you can tell, I gave this book five stars and it completed my challenge to read a book with an author alliteration. I also participated in Spoopathon this month. This book helped me complete both the comfort read and the graphic novel prompt. And I also got bonus points for it having LGBTQ plus representation. And I was part of the Order of the Spies. So it also gave me points for having the team color, which was orange. The third book I read was And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. This book features 10 people on a secluded island. One of them is a murder and no one is innocent. I thought the poem that was so integral in this book was so creepy and eerie, but I loved it. I was trying to figure out who the murderer was, but if I really was going to do that, I should have focused more on the poem. I read it once all the way through, then I read it verse by verse as each victim was killed, and I really should have read ahead, but I really liked this book more than I was expecting to. Although the first couple chapters had me a little worried with the writing style, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, but as I read more and more, it became more intriguing and I got used to the writing style and I absolutely was enraptured by this. Like I said, I was trying to figure out who the killer was and I did not succeed. They were my number three pick. My number one was because they said something really suspicious to me and apparently it didn't mean anything, but I was like, that line that you said? I don't like that. I kept them in the back of my mind. Watch out for that one. And I was wrong. It was really hard because all the characters just give off bad vibes and you don't know who to trust. There was this one character that I wish I'd paid more attention to because I didn't like them and I really should have trusted my gut and been more suspicious of them. So really the only thing I disliked about this book was the detective scene at the end. I felt like it could have been summed up in one sentence. It literally just could have said, after inspecting everything, the authorities couldn't figure it out. That's all I needed to say and then we could have jumped into the reveal. So now I'm gonna jump into some spoilers. So if you don't wanna know, I'm gonna put this up and wait till this goes away and then you can jump back into the video. I was surprised that everyone dies. I thought that the murderer would be hidden somewhere on the island if it wasn't one of them or everyone else would be killed and they just like maniacally laugh and somehow get off the island or something to make it look like everyone had died. But they were willing to kill themselves to accomplish an impossible murder. And I did not expect that. I'm so mad at myself because I told myself not to trust the deaths. It still could be someone just because they died doesn't mean that they're actually dead and could be sneaking around behind the scenes. But for some reason, I just brushed over that. Eventually, I was like, nah, it's fine. They're all probably dead at this point. I don't know why, but I literally told myself at the beginning and I didn't listen to myself. And I didn't like when the judge was orchestrating everyone's collective decisions. I don't like that he's doing that. But again, I didn't think about it too much. 
So it makes me mad. And going back, I realized there was one line in particular. Ooh, this is an important line, but we don't know who says it. But again, I brushed over it. And then the person says a very similar line later on and I didn't catch on and it was so obvious afterwards. I was like, why didn't I pick that up? And then the gunshot, uh, why didn't anyone hear the gunshot? And they're like, oh, it's because everyone was busy. That seems weird, but okay. Why didn't I pick up on these things? I did, because I was like, that's important. Did I listen to myself? No. But overall, I really did enjoy this book. I was happily surprised by this classic mystery. So let me know if you've read any more Agatha Christie and which ones are your favorites and which ones I should definitely look into. So let me know down in the comments. And this completed my year published challenge, which is to read a book that was as close to 1938 as possible and And Then There Were None was published in 1939. For Spoopathon, it completed my new genre challenge, and I got the bonus points for reading a spooky book. The fourth book I was able to read was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. So everyone thinks that Andy Bell was killed by her boyfriend, Sal Singh. As Pippa's senior project, she is determined to find out the truth of what really happened. This was so intriguing and so fun. I loved Pippa and Robbie, who is Sal's younger brother. I loved their relationship and partnership. At the beginning, she's just like, okay, I need you for information. And then they become friends. And by the end, I totally shipped them together. They were such a great pair and I love them together. Again, I was trying to figure out who was behind everything and I did not see things coming. I loved how everything came together but I was so invested in the story and so intrigued by everything that was going on. She's trying to solve this case and work on her senior project as well as complete her college applications. She kept having to brush over the college application stuff and work on the case. And I was like, okay, everything that's happening with the case, very important, I understand. But would you please finish your application so I can stop worrying about it? That would help a lot. And I think that says a lot about me. This book definitely gets really intense more than I was expecting, especially when in the beginning she's just getting information and putting clues together. And as you go farther and farther into the book, it's so much more than that. I will say that the data entry logs weren't my favorite. They were very monotonous, but that was kind of the point. I just have one question. How are there two more books in this series? I'm excited to figure out what happens in those two books, but I, I thought this ended great. I was getting near the end and then there was that twist. And I was like, oh, okay, that's why the next book's called that. That's what's gonna happen. That's why we're having a series. And then that didn't happen. And I was like, okay, what happens in the next two books? I'm really intrigued, but I'm definitely looking forward to see what happens next. So I gave this book five stars. And for Spoopathon, it completed my trick or treat challenge, which is where I had to choose two books. I had a trick book, a book that I didn't really wanna read and a treat book. Then I went over on the Spoopathon Discord and had people vote on which one I should read. And thankfully, my treat pick won. So I'm very happy about that. Because this book was recommended to me, I also got some bonus points for reading it. And the fifth and final book that I was able to read was Fangs by Sarah Anderson. This is a love story between a vampire and a werewolf. I think this cover is absolutely gorgeous. You can't really tell, but it's like a material. The design of this book is gorgeous. I like that this was a quick Halloween read that I actually was able to read on Halloween. But the thing is, I liked it, I didn't love it. The humor was really hit and miss for me. I wanted a cute, funny romance, and instead, this was merely a sudden relationship that was blander than I expected. So for that one, I gave it three stars. For Spoopathon, it did complete my Read After Dark challenge, and I got bonus points for it being a spooky book and I was also able to escape the haunted house because of it. I wish I had liked it more, but it just wasn't my favorite. Well, those are all the books that I was able to read in October. I'd love to know some books that you were able to read this month, and if you've read any of these, I'd love to know what you thought of them. So let me know down in the comments. As always, so let me know down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to share the love. I'll see you next time. Bye.